Here's why simplicity is better than a complex business. Now, when it comes to complex businesses, there's nothing wrong with them. And in my opinion, if you have a very complex product or a complex service, it is possible to build a successful business. But when it comes to competition, when it comes to all these different aspects of business that maybe we don't quite understand, sometimes a simple business is a lot easier to scale and you don't need to have the same amount of team and you know professionals working for you in order to grow it to a massive level. So for a lot of people, I actually think a simple business is the way to go. And again, your first business doesn't mean it's your last business. Just because you started one business, it doesn't mean that that's gonna be your business forever. It could just be a learning platform for you to learn how to run a business, how to start a business, how to manage a business. All those things are very, very important so that if you want to move on to a more complex business later on, you can. So the more simple you can make your business process, the more efficiently it's gonna run, the more efficiently you're gonna be finding workers and team members that wanna join you, and the more efficiently you're gonna be producing output for your customers. So there's actually a lot of benefits to having a very simple business, but a, a very simple example is something like, let's say lawn care. So you provide lawn care services. It's not like, it's not hard to understand what you do. It's very, very simple. People have grass, that grass grows. They need to cut the grass, but they don't have time. Or maybe they don't wanna get dirty, or maybe they don't have a lawnmower, whatever it might be. And so guess what? They call your lawn care company. And it's a very straightforward, very simple business. There's no crazy calculations that are happening there. There's really nothing that happens there. The only advantage that you really have is probably like one of three things. So either you do it faster than your competitors, or you can provide it at a, a lower service cost. So let's say your competitors are charging $200 and you charge $150. Or number three, you have the highest level of service. So you really only have like three levers that you can pull when it comes to growing your company. So it's totally up to you on what exactly you wanna do. It's entirely up to you as the business owner as far as which one of those three you want to excel in. And really, if you can master like two of them, you're gonna do pretty well because most people are not even doing one of them. They just have a, a business idea, they launch their business, but they're not really the best at anything. They're just kind of like middle market, right? And of course, some people are gonna call them just because of the numbers of it. But for the most part, like you have to be able to excel at a couple specific things in order for those people to wanna call you back and continue doing business with you. And of course, there's the aspect of like customer service and personality and all that. And so if you make friends with the people that you're doing business with or that you're providing the service for, they'll probably just call you back because you're their friend. Even if you're not the cheapest, even if you're not the best service, and even if you're not providing the fastest solution for them. So in order to gain that competitive advantage, so if you don't have a book of business and you wanna grow your book of business, you have to be able to have some sort of competitive advantage above your peers or your competition. So this is probably the easiest way to grow your business, by the way. If you're trying to expand into a new market, just find a way to deliver that service faster or that product faster. That's one of the easiest things that you can do because if I'm calling two lawn care companies and one of them says they can come by later tonight and the other one says, hey, we might have availability next week. Well, I'm probably gonna call the guy who can come by tonight because I want the service performed today. And truthfully, if you're talking about a wealthy client base or a wealthy demographic that you're targeting, those people oftentimes want the fastest solution. So. The most expensive thing that we have in our lives is actually time. If we have all the money in the world, but we don't have any time to enjoy it, guess what? That money is worthless. And so really like you can always make more money. You can always go out there, find a way to make money. You can find a way to grow your business. Your investments are doing well. You're making lots of money, but there's no such a thing as increasing our time. And so we can never increase the amount of time that we have. It's a very limited amount and every person is basically limited to like a general range of time. So if you can find a way to save wealthy people time, they're gonna wanna trade their money for things that give them more time or services that give them more time. So they start buying their time back. And I see this happen time and time again. You have a business owner who starts a business, they start making some money, they're spending all their time in their business. They're like, oh, I wanna make more money, I wanna make more money, I wanna make more money. And at a certain point in time, it hits them and they're like, wait a minute, I wanna buy more time, I wanna buy more time, I wanna buy more time. And so they start spending money in order to buy more time. That becomes their first priority above anything else. And so, you have the people who want things done very quickly. 
If you can get things done quicker than somebody else, I am more likely to hire you than I am to hire somebody else. It is the most valuable currency in the world because it's scarce. Now, secondly, you can provide a higher level of service, right? So if you just become the absolute best at mowing lawns and you know how to do all the fancy little designs and you know how to make it look super green and my lawn looks better than my neighbors. Well, hey, you know, maybe I'll, if that's my priority, I will hire you. But imagine if you could do that at a large scale. So you are now branded as the guy or the girl who creates dream lawns. You have the opportunity to have the most beautiful lawn in the entire neighborhood. We might not be the fastest, but at least we do the best work. And so everybody wants to hire us. And yes, maybe there's a bit of a wait in order to work with us, but at least you're gonna have the nicest lawn and there's no doubt about it. That's the second option, right? And the third option is just the cheapest guy in the block. So if everybody else is charging $200 for landscaping, I might charge 150 or 180, and I'm just competing based on price, right? But I think that's actually a huge mistake and I do not recommend doing that one because as a small to medium business owner, you're not competing on price, you're competing on value. How can you create more value than your competitors? And we'll, we'll get to that in just a second, but you wanna create value. You're competing on value. How can your service create more value for the customer than your competitor? You're not competing on price. The people that compete on price are doing massive volume. Those are the people that are like Amazon, Walmart, like they're selling so many products that they have the opportunity to compete on price and that's only because their cost of goods sold is so affordable. So they're they're not spending a lot of money on their goods and they're able to deliver them at a very low price. Now imagine if you could get really good at two of these, right? So maybe let's leave the price one alone, but let's talk about quality and time. If you can be the fastest delivery, so it's you're the fastest person to deliver this service to your clients and you also have the highest quality, I think it's a no-brainer that people would hire you all the time, even if you're the most expensive. So don't think of price as like a prohibitive thing. Yes, maybe at your current service level, if you were to try to raise prices, people would not agree to use your service. But imagine if you were the fastest and you were the best. Would people be willing to pay double? I would probably pay double for somebody who's the fastest and the best, so I don't have to wait to have the best service in the world. And I know I'm gonna have the nicest lawn on the entire block. I'm in, I'd, I would pay 400 for that, or let's say even a 50% price increase. So it's up to you as the business owner to then figure out the math. It's like, okay, do I need to hire more people to make this happen? Do I need to get better tools? Do I need to have you know, maybe different systems in place? How can I be the fastest and the highest quality product or service in my industry and figure out how much it's gonna cost you to deliver that and then raise your prices accordingly and become that leader in your industry and don't pay attention to the competition. Again, you're not competing on price, you're competing on value. Alrighty guys, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.